Come on, get out of there. Get. Oh, oh, that's good. That's my first run. That's the first run I've ever had in this kiln. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? It's kiln opening time! Kiln opening, kiln opening, kiln opening. This one here is just gonna be a plain old kiln opening video. I had opened up my kiln and we see what we got in there. Just keep in mind, I haven't even opened this thing yet, so I don't know what's in here. Come on, get out of there, get. Oh, oh that's good. That's my first run. That's the first run I've ever had in this kiln. Oh, that's sad. This was actually going to be a really good, nice bowl. Oh, dude, that's so sad. Ooh, we got the good, we got the bad, we got, we got the ugly. I think you guys know how we do this by now. We start off with the stuff that I didn't like the most, and then we gear up to the thing that I think was the winner of the kiln load. And then you guys leave your comment down below and say what you like the most. Let's start off with this abomination of God. This here was an experiment of this stuff called Sankey Red that I was supposed to put a hold on, but I really wanted to see what would happen if I didn't put a hold on it to see if it would turn red anyway. But the problem is that it's really, it, it doesn't have a lot of glass-like chemical in it, so it's really, really rough. It's not really glass-like chemical at all. But I might just put a really thin layer on it, because this thin layer looks kind of good, but it's still really, really rough. And I also tried to layer it with a couple other glazes, and it just it just pitted the hell out of itself. And it looks really nice, to be honest. If you put this inside like a Japanese art portfolio, it would look like something that belonged. But it's not a tea bowl. It's not made correctly. It's it's really just a luck byproduct of this type of ritualistic looking pottery, and I'm not into it. This uh, we're gonna call this one a failure right here. This right here is pretty much the same exact thing, except for you can really see the entirety of the glaze I was experimenting with on the outside. And of course, because it's an iron glaze and I didn't put a hold on it, it turned brown like doo-doo. But the major reason this is on the bottom slot is because you look inside and there's some really good colors, but there's also a lot of crawling. So I'm just going to call this glaze a loss. I'm going to put it in my notebook as a glaze that I'm not going to use in the future unless I can get a kiln that can put a hold because it's really difficult to do a hold in a manual kiln. Get out of here. We don't love you. Boom. Oh, yeah. You like that? Mmm. Is that your favorite color of glaze right there? That clear on that swirl? Oh, yes, Dante. I love it. I love it so much. It's my favorite. Boom. This is why it's on the bottom slide. This thing is crater central. This thing looks like a 13 year old going through puberty. It's full of craters and it's ugly. This is one of the main reasons why I always test my stuff on actual bowls and products before I put them out. Most potters will test their glaze on test aisles just like these. These are the same exact glaze, these two right here. And they'll put them on these test aisles to see if they're viable or good before they test them on a real product like this flipping bowl right here. But I've learned over time not to trust these. These right here just look like a darker brown, look kind of burgundy reddish, but they're really not. But usually what would happen is you would get something out of the kiln like this and you go, oh, okay, so it's not a brilliant glaze, but it still works. And then you'd make a big old five gallon batch of it and be like, eh, it'll do. No, no, it won't do. This is seriously like one of the reasons that I always test my stuff on test styles and bowls is simply because they come out massively different on a real product sometimes than they do on a test aisle. So usually I'll make a crappy bowl and I'll make some crappy test aisles. But I am going to reglaze you because your backside is beautiful, girl. Then we have this one. This one came out extra nice. It's pretty much the same exact bowl, even with the outside. This is kind of the little brother to the bowl I just showed you. But it came out a lot nicer in the middle. We got, still got those craters and those bubbles in there. But to be honest with you, this thing right here is, just looks a little bit more attractive. I'll probably reglaze this one as well as the other one. Boom! Sexy bowl. This one actually came out really, really good. I like this bowl a lot. This one is my Ron Roy's High Gloss Black with my new clear recipe that somebody had given me. And this, this combo works out really, really well. That clear doesn't have no crackles in it, so I can't really use it as a clear, but I will say it goes along fairly well with the majority of my glazes. The only problem I have with it is that the inside right here had a tiny bit of crawling just right in this edge right here. But it still looks like it soaked up some glass. So technically speaking, I could give this away to a patron, but like, 
I feel really bad giving you something like this because I have standards. And this right here, I don't really hate this, but I will say this is probably going to go in the garbage pile. Um, along with people who bring their babies inside of movie theaters and let them cry for a long time. As the zebra gallops across the plains of Africa. These ones came out pretty good actually. The only difference is I ended up stacking them differently as far as the clay goes. So this one came out this kind of perfect meld of white and brown and then it came out brown mostly on the outside. This one right here is mostly brown on the bottom and then it has some texture and some marbleization on the top here. But I can safely say this one probably came out the best simply because it has the most white. I prefer my marbleized clay to be mostly white with some dark sprinkled in and then the inside also has the same type of effect. You can see those two down there are mostly brown on the inside, but I really like a nice even mixture. It's mostly brown down there, then it turns white, and up here it's really good. It's brown, white, brown, white, brown, white. It has a really good even pattern. But this one right here is like mostly brown, as opposed to this one has a really nice blend of white and brown together. Okay, are you ready now? Because this is the stuff that I actually like. This bowl right here is probably a perfect example of what I was talking about as far as the patternization. See, I really, really like this marbleization, especially at the bottom right here. You can see that the trim really brought it out. And you can see the bottom has a really nice pattern of marbleization. But then you look at the inside and it's like mostly brown. You see what I mean? A couple of these come out pretty good. I really like this marbleization here, but I will say a lot of them seem to come out really brown on the inside like this. And I'm, I'm just not as excited about this as I am about something like this. This is completely marbleized on the outside, and then you also have some nice marbleization on the inside. This is more my speed. This is more of what I'm looking for right here, is because this has really nice marbleization as far as what happened. I, didn't, I don't trim the insides of my stuff or anything. I simply just let it go. But these experiments here are more just to test out my clear glaze because I really want to make sure there's no cracks in it, it's still working. And of course I got it from Digital Fire, so it's A-OK. -okay. I'm making a lot of marbleized stuff right now and that's purely because I want to keep testing to make sure that my clear is okay. And I like to test other clears and clear is like majorly the thing that you want to put on marbleized clay. You really want to see through it and this is like a really high gloss clear recipe I have here. So these came out just fine. Okay, you guys ready? Because this is what I thought was the winner, for sure. For sure, I was like, this came out A-OK. -okay. Captain's Log, star date, I overglazed this plate, but it came out fantastic anyway. I am extremely excited about this plate. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea how this happened. This is a combination of my black and my Lumos and some Tenmoku gold. You can see the nice Tenmoku gold on the outside. You can see the black on the inside and the Tenmoku gold on the inside as well. And the whole thing was caked over with Lumos. I'm pretty sure I already gave you guys the recipe to my Lumos, but in case you're curious, this is Ron Weiss High Gloss Black in the middle, and then we have Lumos in the middle as well, and the Lumos is caked on. There's a lot of Lumos on this. And then on the outside, the outer brim is all Tenmoku Gold. I need to change out my elements because my Tenmoku Gold is getting a little bit matte, and it should be a lot shinier and runnier than this. And the back side doesn't look anything special. The back side just looks like Randy's red or I didn't put enough on it or something. I have no idea what happened to its backside. But really, this thing is all chest. This thing is all front candy. If you guys have been watching my Instagram, you'll probably know that this thing looked horrible before I put it in. This thing looked just caked on white and brown and red and it didn't look like this at all. And then I put it in and something magical happened to it. I'm just gonna take this as a gift from the Kiln Gods. I've actually been getting really lucky with my plates recently. I'm not sure why, I'm not sure how, but for some strange reason my plates are coming out exceedingly well while the rest of my bowls are coming out like that stuff I showed you earlier. And it, it really, really reminds me of a coral reef with this darkness on the outside and this nice blue on the inside. And it, it really, really, it really... This plate is, in my mind, the winner of the entire kiln. The kiln gods were good to me this day. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Although I did have to sacrifice some pieces. And that's about all I got for you guys today. I really wish I had more, but these bowls are kind of too big for my kiln, so I can only fit maybe like 20 bowls in my kiln before I actually run out of space and they usually have to be a medium size. If you want to see any of my actual artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to look at. But thank you guys for joining me today. I really like that you guys are leaving comments down below telling me which pieces you like the most and really liking these videos because I was really worried. <laughs> I was so worried. But thank you guys for joining me today and I will see you Dirty Potters next week.
It's easy cause you're beautiful If you looked like this I probably would break up with you